From K Max, Chrissy, both you and Elisa have appeared on the kill stream with Ethan Ralph. How would you compare your two experiences there? I mean, I've done the kill stream, the kill stream a couple of times. Why least, did you do that? Can I ask why? Twice. Why? Like, what was the purpose of that? For you? I think I wanted to promote some stand up dates, and I. I haven't, I guess I have an okay relationship with, with Ethan Ralph. Like he, um, we're not like tight or anything, but I had a, I guess I had a positive time that the two times I went on and I, I think I did notice I got a few more followers and I think I went on because I, you know, Ethan was like, had heard of, or was a fan of compound media and I have a show on compound media. So I'm like, okay, this is all possibly in the same world. One of the times I was on, I do remember I talked to a guy I don't know if his name was Victor or Vance or something. He was like a hardcore conservative. And I started bringing up like that I'm friends with porn stars or that I have friends that are sex workers. And oh, he was very judgmental and like very, very much trying to shame me. And I'm like making jokes about having sex. And like, that's like part of my personality. I like to keep it light. But this guy was like so serious and he was not humored by me. And like yeah. as a comic, I was like, oh, I can't crack this nut, you know? Um, but I have noticed, yeah, I, I think I, I got some fans from the appearances and like had a decent time, I guess. And it was, it was a Are while you a ago. Fan? Are you a fan of that show? Do I you don't, like that no, show? I don't watch the show. Like if I okay. have free time and I'm going to sit down and, and like watch a show, no, yeah. that, that wouldn't even be yeah. in my top 20 of shows that I would occur to me to watch. So like, okay. not that I, I, I just don't. You know, it's not what it wouldn't be like what I would listen to, like Michaela Peterson podcast or like some shows on compound media or like Jordan Peterson or some stuff on the blaze or daily wire. Yeah. So I, okay. I guess so I'm like, you just went on for the followers and you got yeah, some. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you have a bad time? I did. I had a very bad time. Oh, the, no. so I, I think I was on twice. I think the first time I had a good time because he came on Kermit and friends and he was so wonderful on there. And he was really professional. He had a great setup. He spoke well. I, I, I thought to myself, I need more people like this to come on my show. And he was terrific. And then I went on there. It was fine. And then he invited me there another time. And he put me on with this guy that was so hateful. And there was just no humor to it. I wonder it. if it was the same guy as me. <laughs> it, it's, it's, and his name is Beardson. Someone just, I see okay. that in the chat. Um, okay. He just hates women. Wow. That's this and, other guy too for me. I'm yeah. Like he hated women. And it's really hard to argue with someone like that. So, and the, he just had no good points. He was just really, really bitter and hateful. And after all these years of doing this, you would think I would know how to deal with someone like that. Same. And I, and yeah. I still, I still don't. I, oh, still I was trying to like charm that. my way out of it. Yeah, I was you trying, can't. I was trying to like flirt with this guy and like, yeah. I was being cute. I'm so lovable. You know what exactly. I mean? Like, exactly. Exactly. I, I couldn't get through to this guy. And like, of course, like in any show you do, you're going to have haters. Like it's always possible. You're always the people in the chat. And like, I'm, I'm dumb. Cause I'll like sometimes watch the chat and then be like, Oh, she's a dumb girl. Da, da, da. Insults like misogynistic comments. Sure. Fine. And I can yeah. handle that. Cause that's life. That's called being on the internet. Right. Um, I think what bothered me is that I wasn't able to like charm or turn this person and like have them see my sense of humor. Like they were just very judgmental, which made it not fun for me, but I'm not going to say like that was the worst experience ever it just was like okay it felt like a tough cookie yeah it was it was really tough for me I didn't enjoy that um it felt like a uh like a challenge you know so I like challenges um and I don't I don't know if I would like do that again you know something like yeah. that but you never know when it's gonna be that right because it's not like oh here's yeah. the plan we're, we're gonna have this guy on who is like the opposite of you on all these things yeah. Yeah. Like I've been on, you know, many radio shows and, and podcasts and, and sometimes, you know, it's going great. And then the person comes at you with something where you feel like they hate you <laughs> and, yeah. and it comes out of nowhere and you cannot control that. You don't, you know, you're not in charge of editing. It's not your show. So you just don't know. You just, it's just a risk you have to take and, and you have to have, be willing for it to go bad. <laughs> That's it. You know, and be, just be fine with that. Yeah. It's like, would I be like dying to go back? <laughs> Maybe if it was just me and Ethan who I like. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But if I'm going to be thrown to – it's not like I can't stand up for myself or prove my point, but it's like, eh, maybe I would because I feel like I have enough – confidence again but if it's like if it's like it has to be an hour or two hours like having a, a fight with somebody eh, maybe not 
Yeah, it's not that fun. Yeah. Um, I, the fights that I've had with people, they, I mean, they can be fun, but that kind of fight, just like a w- women hater, basher type guy, I just feel like there's nothing that good can come out of that. So Yeah, how can that be fun? Like, they do, they they say their points. They always, like, loop back to their same points. Um you know, like, oh, you're trash if you have sex with anybody before marriage. Like, and I can hang a little bit like, yeah, like, uh, like women's only value is like in their virginity. And God, it was so long ago. And I, that's insane. I mean, one person talks like that. I do such a good (laughs) job of blocking out bad experiences, probably because how I was raised, but I, I, I get over stuff so quickly just because, and then I'll be like, oh yeah, that shitty thing happened. I I had totally put it out of my mind. But to me, the overall vibe was like, yeah, misogynistic and like really not humored by me, which that part hurt the most because I'm just so charming. <laughs> Wait, how did your childhood prepare you for that uh, Ethan Ralph thing? Were you like, a uh, no, I know I, I say that in a way that makes me sound abused, but like, uh, like my parents didn't really, I don't know. Not that even like it was rough per se, but it's just like, we didn't have a lot of money and like, I kind of grew up, grew up feeling like the things I wanted didn't really matter. Like, um, and I, who knows, this might be like raised by boomers thing or like the way, like, you know, my dad was a German immigrant, you know, like, pr- I think anybody like how you're raised is like, it's ultimately going to be a trickle down result of whatever your parents unresolved issues are. Right. So like my dad's dad was in a cult, was in a Mooney cult and like divorced oh. my, my dad's mom, my grandma at a time where like people weren't really getting divorced. And it's like put, gave a lot of the family's money to this Mooney cult, like the Moonies. They're a real thing. You can look wow. them up. You can look it up. It's crazy. 